Today I wanted to talk to you about project-based learning and language arts. Now it can be pretty challenging to fit PBL into this content area, so I wanted to provide you an example of how I have been able to accomplish this in the past. The example I'm going to talk about today is something that would occur over multiple days. Textual evidence, everyone's favorite subject, right? First, you're given a passage or a story and then a question, which requires you to go back into your story and find actual evidence to support your answer. While it's not as easy as it sounds and it can become pretty tedious or boring, so this is a great time to incorporate that project-based learning. First, you do have to introduce it to your class and I like to do that through some whole group learning. I like to project a passage, a story, a poem, or maybe a myth up on the board. Then I give my class a question and teach them to go back into that story and find the evidence to support our answer that we come up with as a class. Now Study Island, which is an academic software that I love to utilize within my classroom, has some ready-made lessons for you that you can utilize when you are introducing textual evidence. And when I say ready-made, I mean it is completely ready for you. They have outlined lessons, they have PowerPoints that are ready for you to project up on that board. They have stories that you can just print and give to your students. And for the whole group part of this lesson, there you have a fable. And you can provide the students with the fable or project it up on the board. And the students have to go back into the fable and find the sentences that best support the moral. And so that is a great way to incorporate a couple different objectives into your lesson. Now, once we have completed the whole group portion of our lesson, I then like to put them into the small group learning. And the story that I like to utilize during this time is called How a Tsunami is Formed. And I get this story off of Study Island. Once the students have finished their small group learning, I pull them back all together. We review the story and the questions and talk about the answers. And we also talk about why the answers are correct. And the reason that I pull them all back together and we review it is because I want to make sure that they have that firm understanding of this concept before we continue to move on. Now since we have introduced that textual evidence, they've worked in those small groups, I then like to go ahead and introduce that project-based learning here. And since our last story was about tsunamis, why not introduce some project-based learning about tsunamis? To start off our project-based learning, first I divided my students into groups of three or four. Then I introduced them to the supplies that I had. And for each class, it's different. It depends on what's in my craft closet at the time and how much money I have to buy more. Now for the particular class I'm going to show you, I think I had like craft sticks, cotton balls, foil, plastic wrap, um, plastic plates, cups, and a few other little things thrown in here and there, like some straws and different things like that. Then after I introduced them to the supplies, I let them choose from the different pans that I brought. And finally, I project the instructions up on the board. We had about 50 minutes for our rotation, therefore I allowed about 40 for the building process. This provided us time for checking for leaks and cleanup. I projected a timer so they could see how much time was left. And when I said tsunami, time was up and hands had to be moved away. The students really enjoyed this project. It worked on team building, science, critical thinking, and also utilized their math skills. The students really enjoy the Tsunami PBL. It is a great way to connect their learning to real life. It helps them see the importance of being able to find evidence to the questions at the end of the story. Once the students have had that hands-on learning and brain break, they are more refreshed to begin their independent work. Since we have completed whole group and small group, we move on to the independent work the next day. Now, Study Island does give you modifications for the advanced learner as well as for those who are struggling with this concept. My students are ready. I go ahead and have them complete the independent online work on Study Island, and they are able to complete this in game mode if they choose to do so. 
You can find something similar to what I did on Teachers Are Terrific. This is not where I got my idea. However, since it is so similar, I wanted to go ahead and put it in the description box below. I do believe she goes more into depth having her students purchase supplies and so forth. So if you are looking to incorporate more math into your project-based learning, you should go check that out. Thank you so much for watching. And remember to be proud of your work, productive in your day, and positively joyful.